Okay, a quick introduction on how to edit um, translations of articles in WordPress. Um, you see here the back end of my, of my blog, um, which I run on WordPress. Um, and I have several translations uh, uh, running on this blog. So I use the plugin Polylang to translate posts and manage translations. And when you go into all posts, you will see an overview of all the posts that uh, we have in the blog. And you can see here that there are different language versions uh, being active on this blog. And what I want to explain here is if you're editing articles on this blog or on your own blog, um, how do you manage translations? You see, for example, this article here um, is uh, a Brazilian version or Portuguese version. Um, and you can see here there is also a Spanish version and an English version. If I edit this post, I will be editing the Portuguese version. But if I click here on the edit sign under the uh, American flag or on this edit symbol under the Spanish flag, I will be edit, editing, the, editing the respective translation. You can also see there's no translation available currently in German, in Danish, in Chinese, or in Korean. So I could click here these uh, plus signs, and that would add uh, another translation. So for example, if I click on plus here, it opens a new empty editor. And now I can write here the um, Korean uh, translation, for example. So this would be the title and then here the body. Oh, actually it was Chinese right here. So Chinese uh, translation and so on. Um, you can see here the categories have already been adjusted accordingly. That is because I translated all the categories. I will be showing that also separately. And if you go down here, you can see that um, this post is uh, a Chinese uh, post, so we'll be running on the uh, Chinese version. I will go back again because I, I don't want to publish this translation. But very important, if you want to publish a translation of an existing article, don't go and add a new post. Instead, find the existing post and add it, uh, add the new post as a translation. There's also another way uh, in which you can do it. It's by uh, simply entering the, the website. So this is our website, our blog. And since I'm logged in, you will see this menu bar. And I can, for example, go now onto this post and I could enter um, edit post. This will take me directly to the editor of this post. And I can go down here on the sidebar. There we go. Somewhere here. Down here, um, you see there's a language section. And uh, here I could then, for example, uh, choose to edit the existing Portuguese or Spanish version, or I could add another translation. So, for example, I could click here on German, and that would open uh, the German version, which I could be uh, writing in here and then publish. Now, as a workflow, I would recommend find the existing article which in case in this case was this article and then let's say I want to translate this article into German use uh, Google Translate and um, and translate uh, the post into German that's what you can see here and then simply Copy paste everything. I'm going to scroll down here. Copy paste the entire post. Now I'll go back to the editor 
and this is the translated version that I want to publish. I paste everything and you can see it, it pastes the entire content, it pastes the figures and everything and it's already translated now I just need to edit it since there might be some mistakes in the translation since I use Google Translate. So as a workflow I would recommend this. As you can see uh, the the categories have already been translated um, so the only thing you really need to do after you clicked uh, on the respective language version is to to copy paste the or to enter the the, the, the content of the post and then uh, to publish it and then it will be running as a translated version so if we deactivate again uh, the Google Translate function here on the website let's go back to the top now this was an English version and uh, I know now that there is also, for example, a Portuguese version of this article. If I click on the Brazilian flag representing the Portuguese version here, it will take me to the translated article. So now I see the Portuguese article. And that is the, the advantage of Polylang. And that is the reason why you always have to synchronize uh, posts um, so that the website always knows which article is the translated version of another article. So to summarize, if you want to publish a translated version of an article, don't click Add New Post. Instead, find the existing post and then click the respective symbol to add a translated version. There's one more thing which is relevant for administrators. It's not relevant for authors, since authors don't have these user rights. Um, and that is, if you use Polylang, you also have to remember to translate the categories. So you can see here, I have all my blog post categories listed here and you can see this is for example agent-based simulation this is a category it's an English category and if I want to have this category in other languages as well I, I need to translate this category so also here on the categories just as on the posts I need to remember to um, add translated versions of each category and that will ensure that when I add, add a translated version of a post, it automatically will assign the translated category.